Hey everyone, it's Keila here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. Today's soap, I'm going to be using one of the fragrances from my haul, which is Lavender Martini. Ever since the first time I heard of this fragrance, I wanted to have a smell of it. And when I said I was going to place an order with Nature's Garden, I was told that I definitely needed to get this one in because it was along those sort of lines of smells that I like. It's got lemon zest and orange and it's got carbonation. And it's that carbonation which always draws me into a fragrance, that sort of feeling that you've got bubbles going up your nose. It's also got mint, bergamot, lavender and rosewood through it. And it does have 0% vanilla. So I'm hoping to be able to use a new white mica that I've got in for this soap and I'm also wanting to have a go at a swirl which has fascinated me since before I started making soaps and that is a secret feather swirl. So I'm really hoping that this fragrance oil plays nice in my soap so I can try and achieve this secret feather swirl. Let's go see if we can do it. So I have my oils and my live water already all prepared here and what I'm going to do is start by mixing up the lye and the oil solution just to emulsion because I want to keep this as thin as I can to try and achieve this feather swirl. So I'm going to pour my lye water into my oils. I'm pouring it down the stick blender just to um, prevent any splashback and then we'll get to mixing. Okay, so I really have only pulsed this until I can see that there's no more oil streaks sitting on the top here. And what I have got in my cups here, I actually took some of the oil out of my bucket before and I've diluted my micas just to make this a lot easier to mix in. In this little one here, I have some eminence mica. I'll just pour a little bit of that off. In my next jug here I have some Mad Minion and we're going to pour about the same off in that one. I also have some Aero Green Mica and I'm going to use this one for doing a little bit of piping at the end. And then I have another jug here which has some Grandeur Gold Mica and I only need a very small amount of that one. And then just to make my pouring a lot easier, I'm going to pour off some of this white as well. But first of all, we'll get this one colored. I have this Lilac Rainbow Glitter Mica. So it is a mica and it's got some bigger flecks of mica in there, which are that sort of lilac purpley color that you may be able to see shining from off it. This is the first time I am going to be using this mica, so we'll see how it goes. I'm really hoping that it's going to add a really nice shimmer into the soap, um, and hopefully we can get a really nice effect out of it. So I'm going to get these colours all mixed up, and I'm going to pour all of my fragrance into this jug, and then just a bit of white in there, and then we'll start pouring it into the moulds. Here. And what I've got here are some cardboard pieces which I have got from off a delivery box and I've just wrapped them up in some contact paper. First thing I'm going to do is pour some of this white into the base of my mould here and that should do it about there. And then what I'm going to do is just place my pieces in here. Oop! And they're not going to stand up so it may be they keep wanting to float <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of hold that down now what I'm going to do is alternate so I'm going to pour a little bit of this darker purple just down the middle here I don't really want it to drop down so I'm just pouring quite slowly so I've got a, a bit of a, a streak going there I may be a little bit too fluid for this technique but we will find out towards the end I'm gonna pour a layer of my white and 
I think I am probably a little bit too fluid for it so I might just go and stick blend these just a little bit just to get it a bit thicker so that they don't actually drop into each other okay so I'll put these back up all right so I poured that darker purple first I'm now going to come and grab this lighter purple and I'm just going to pour gently across the middle here I think I'm going to end up with a bit more of a drop swirl on here than a feather but we're going to give it a go it will still be a pretty soap at the end anyway and you never know I might just surprise myself so this white is starting to set up a bit more you kind of want the colors to sit on top of each other because what we then do is put a hanger swirl through it or we'll just we actually just put the hanger through it once that white's a much better consistency so we'll come back to this dark purple and I'm just going to keep going and alternating between the two and as I'm filling this middle column up what I'll do is that other um, jug with my white I will start to fill the sides in so really need another pair of hands to do this one but I'm going to pour just a bit more of my white in there just to help hold this up as we go along mold up so it's all level so when we go to take these um, pieces out of here it doesn't just go fluff across my um, soap bar so what I'm now going to do is just gently lift this up and I'm just using my spatula just to knock off all of the white soap batter I'm not going to worry about the other side because it will just get all muddy and then I'll just scrape the rest of that in there so we don't waste any Whoop. and then wow I have made a lot of mess today <laughs> and get some of that cleaned up so I don't end up with that on me and what I'm going to do just to make this easier is turn the mold around and then we're going to take this side out and then I'm going to get my hanger and all I'm going to do is put it down through the middle where a majority of those colors were I'm just going to go straight down and pull off to the side and back up and hopefully this will work now what I'm going to do is scrape out the rest of that white and fill this mold up So I've had a bit of a tidy up and I've put my green into a disposable or a biodegradable piping bag and I have a writer's tip in the end here and it's a writing tip number five and what I'm going to do this is my one of my ends here what I'm going to do is just put a few lines on each of my bars to make it look like we have what will be hopefully a posy of lavender so I'm just going to a couple of them on there like that and then on my tray here I have got all the lavenders that we piped in the behind the scenes video I'm just going to pop that on the end there for now and all I'm going to do is gently peel them from off of the paper there and I'm just going to pop them on to the soap Just like so and those where I think that I need just a little bit more anchorage because I don't think they're gonna stick I will just squeeze a little bit more of the soap underneath just to make sure that they stick to the soap and don't come off when we go to cut them so let's pop you like so all right and I'll move on to the next and what I think I might need to do 
is do every second one and then flip it around and do the other way. So let's do that one again. So I'm just going to make some long pieces here and I've probably saved myself way too much green. In my head I had a lot more space to do this on. So I might just do a couple of these bars. And I am kind of also trying to put them at little bits of angles as well just to give it a little bit more height. So pop you down there. I am actually going to take my gloves off because they are getting in the way. Um, let's grab another one here. I'm just going to gently peel it off, pop it on. And I've got lots of different sizes in these lavenders. So let's grab another piece here. I'll use my little knife to pick them up with and just oh, scoot them off onto the soap. We need a darker one this time. So I'll grab that one up there. And pop that one on there. So I'm going to keep going through and piping all my stems and popping my lavenders onto the soap. And then just to finish off the ends of these lavenders, because you usually have that sort of green leaf bit at the end. I'm just going to pop a couple more of those sort of little markings like I did to pipe the lavender. So it's just simply making a little dot and then pulling the tail of the soap down. And that just finishes them off and makes them look like they're a part of that stem. <music> my flowers on and making sure that they're all going to stick is to start by putting the first flower down and then coming through with the green and putting in the stems for the rest of the flowers and then I'm using that wet soap to be able to stick the rest of the flowers to the top of the soap with. had left I think it may it is still very runny but what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of a sort of ribbon bow sort of thing coming off them hopefully done I was contemplating putting leaves on but usually when you get the um, the lavender stems it's usually just the stem of the lavender and that is it so just to finish this one off I have well, what should we do let's put the blizzard mica I'm just going to spray that across the top to give it a really good sprinkle and shine and then I will bring you down for a closer look so here is lavender martini up close and each bar as you can see will have its own little bunch of lavender on the top and I am really looking forward to seeing whether or not I've been able to get that um, secret feather swirl in the middle of this. So I'm going to leave it sit here overnight and then we'll come back and we'll cut it open. Right, so I am back to cut open Lavender Martini. I am really happy with how this one has come up on the top. I can't wait to get it cut open. It is smelling absolutely gorgeous. Those real citrusy notes come through on this particular fragrance oil. Now I do know as I go through this, I am going to end up cutting some of the lavender tips, but most of the bars will have their own bunch of lavender on the top. So let's cut through and see if I was able to achieve that secret feather swirl. So through we go.
All right, so here we go. So this is the first piece. And look at that, I was able to get it. I honestly didn't think I was going to get that in there at all. I am so super happy with that. And each of those pieces, they've got their own bit of lavender. What I'll end up doing is just knocking off the little bits that are on the side here so that each one has their own little sprig of lavender on the top. And that gorgeous secret feather swirl in the middle there. I am so stoked that that has worked. Let's grab this next one and see how we've gone on there. And again, I'll just knock those little bits off the edge there. That's it. And there we go. So for my first attempt at doing that secret feather swirl, I am absolutely stoked with that. So there is the top of that one. And that blizzard mica that I've sprayed across the top of this soap, it just really brings everything together in there. Um, I can actually see, and I don't know if the camera actually picks it up or not, you can see the little flecks from off of that glitter mica. Just every so often you get those gorgeous little sparkles of lavender come through in that white. So we'll see, might try one from further down the middle and we'll see if we've still got that swirl in the middle or if it's just pure fluke that I've got it in the middle bars. And look, there it is again. I am so pleased with this. And just knock that tiny bit off there. So I hope you have enjoyed watching how I make my lavender martini soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And if you are new around here, why not subscribe to the channel? I do bring out a weekly soap making video as well as some behind the scenes videos of when I make like the little embeds for the tops of my soaps. Thank you so much to everyone who is already subscribed. I really do appreciate all of your support. And until I bring you the next video, I hope you have a great week. I'll see you then. Bye.